Hey, how are you doing? This is Aaron here. I uh, just said to do a quick video on uh, where I've come with collimation. So I've had a, a kind of a long journey with this uh, scope, the 250 PDS. Um, it seems to have a lot of issues with collimation and from the start I had purchased a, a laser collimator. Um, that didn't seem to do the job. I bought a, a collimation cap and a shesher and that didn't seem to do the job. So I was kind of giving up on the scope then at one stage thinking you know maybe there's just something wrong with the mirrors or because I, I couldn't understand what was happening. Um, so final straw I decided to buy this thing it's the Ocal collimator so it's basically a, a, a small camera and it goes into the focus tube of the of the scope and it allows you to put concentric rings around the uh, secondary mirror and the primary mirror and then you can get the alignment absolutely spot on so there's a couple of things that I noticed with this so initially when, when I when I got it um, I collimated using it and it still ended up with a similar issue so I was thinking oh my god and after wasting so much money on this thing um, I wonder what what's going on but in fairness I never would have found the issue unless I had this um, so I'll bring you through what I've done in terms of collimation and explain a few things that I found and, and better ways to do collimation but um, I think if you're interested in owning a Newtonian and you're serious about uh, your images and you want to have kind of uh, decent accurate images um, then this is an absolute must uh, that's my own personal opinion um, but I think if you're using a either a Cheshire or, or a laser they don't really give you that confidence that you have the secondary absolutely centered in in the focus tube um, and then another issue that I did find which I'll show you in a few minutes with this is that even when you do have it centered uh, depending on your image train that you've put into the focus tube it can still be offline so what I actually found was which I wouldn't have seen without the camera is if you take uh, your camera out of the focus tube, put the collimator in and then you do your collimation and you get it to what you think is absolutely perfect take it out and then you put in your image train and lock it in you actually find that it shifts by a fair amount now I don't know if this is isolated to the, the sky watcher that I have here or is this common amongst uh, any Newtonians that have kind of a Crayford focuser but yeah I did find that if you put this into the focus tube and then uh, switch to putting your image train in it was it, it was either bang on or it was way off it was kind of hit and miss so what I've actually devised as a process for myself is to rather than using the bits that came at the camera and and uh, putting them into the focus tube I've now started um, taking my flattener and the extension pieces uh, with my camera into the focus tube get it aligned to where I want it to be and then once it's all locked in place and it's solid and I know there's no movement I screw my camera off the end leaving the rest of the bits in the focus tube and then just screw this collimator onto the end um, you then get your alignment absolutely spot on it might be just a minor adjustment or I'd say initially you might have a significant adjustment but, but then afterwards it's just really adjusting your, your um, primary mirror but um, once you have it locked in place, you can be fairly confident then that when you screw your camera back on, you're going to be in the exact same position than you started when you when you start collimating. So, so anyhow, I, I'm going to skip over to the the telescope here, and then I'll bring you through a few bits of how we have it set up and and show you the collimation process on screen. So this is the Ocal collimator uh, connected. You can see I already have uh, the image train in place, so I have my ZWO filter drawer, uh, the extension pieces and my flattener in the scope. So all you have to do is run a USB cable from it to a laptop uh, or else you, there's also another connection if you buy the Pro version. Um, it gives you a USB connector that you can connect it to Android devices and then they have an app that you can run it from there. So. Um, 
I just added a, a light to the end of the scope here, which you can see. So the purpose of this is just so that you can see the the dot in the collimator. Normally you would have it that um, you're pointing it at a, a kind of a blue sky or kind of semi-bright area, maybe a bright wall or something. So I'm just going to bring you through the Ocal software here. It's fairly straightforward. There isn't really a lot to it. Uh, the idea of the Ocal software is that you can place concentric rings around the image that the camera is displaying from the focus tube. So before we can do that, so you download the Ocal software from the Ocal website. Uh, there's a, a downloads page and there's also another file on the downloads page which is for the the, the code for focus for your uh, for your camera specifically so you download both you download the application either for android or, or your computer one or the other and then you download the, the the file that contains the codes for for your device so once you've downloaded both um you go to this folder here for that that will be installed as part of it and you open the focus.txt file so in this file you'll see there's a code um, and this is the code I was talking about that's in the, the other file so you open the list of codes and then you look up you'll see on the side of the box um, that, that your OCAL came in there, there will be a serial number and you look up your serial number in that file and it'll give you the exact code that you should be pasting in here. So you just take that code from the file, paste it into the focus.txt, and then save the file and you're done. So once you've done that, you just open the OCAL software. So it's not a very slick application. I would have thought once you've installed it, it'll give you an icon on your desktop or something to that effect, but it doesn't. It just gives you this executable file that you open. Uh, once you open it, you end up with this toolbar. And then the first thing that you do uh, at the top of the toolbar is you click turn on camera. And then that will give you a, a, a nice view down your focus tube. So I'm just going to move this over. Okay. So all that you need to do really in here is enable these circles and there'll be one circle for, for different parts of what you're trying to align. The, ideally what you're trying to do is put a circle around the end of your focus tube, a circle around the secondary mirror and then another circle around the center of your primary mirror to get that in the center of the secondary. Uh, so the initial circle that we enable which is circle number one so I'm just going to tick that box and you can see the circle isn't the same size as the enemy focus tube so the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit just to see it a bit better so if I just uh, put my two fingers onto the mouse pads and spread them apart it will allow me to zoom in um, and then you can start moving the circle then to, to make it smaller so you can see there's a radius slider here I'm just going to drag that to the left and you can see it moves very fast so what I usually do is I just move it a little bit and then I use the cursor keys on the keyboard the up down left right so I'm going to use the left one just to bring it down very slightly uh, now you can see this isn't going to align perfectly as a circle so the next thing that I have to do is I want to specify a center offset so you only specify this once because all the circles are going to align centrically anyway so what you do is you turn that on and then you slide this slider here right or left to get it to where you want it to be you can see there it's moving so I'd say it's roughly about there bit more yeah I'd say about there so I'm just gonna try making the circle radius a bit smaller again now you can see we're still a little bit off horizontally so I'm just gonna go to the horizontal axis here and do the same thing no. Now that's looking pretty good to me. I 
be just a fraction more, maybe less actually. So that looks like it's centered to me, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm actually going to drop the weight of the line down. So you can see here you have thickness of circle 1. And if I drag that down to 1, yeah, you can see it's, it's a nice circle around the outside. That looks okay to me. So the next thing that you're looking to do is this edge here of your secondary mirror. You're trying to get that edge as a circle for the circle circle number two. So to be clear, it's not the reflection of your primary, it's the outline of the secondary. So tick that to turn it on. And you can see there the circle is there or thereabouts already. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So click into that, let's say 290. Okay, maybe bigger again. So So I can see that my secondary mirror needs a slight adjustment because it's not in that circle. So I'm just going to make a quick adjustment here. You'll see my hand coming over the secondary. looks like it's a perfect circle to me there now it's going to reduce that down yeah that's not too bad and um, maybe it could come up just a slight little bit so I'm gonna adjust the tilt and that's it there now I think Okay, so you can see now, actually the reflection coming back from my primary mirror is more concentric. So the next thing that I'm going to do is enable circle number three. And then that gives me the circle that I should be centering my uh, primary mirror on. So I'm just going to leave that on for one second. And then I'm going to turn on the crosshairs then at the same time just to see where we are. So we're slightly off with the primary. Uh, it just needs a minor adjustment. So I'm gonna go to the back of the scope and I think it's this one. Yeah, that looks like it's there, thereabouts now. I think that's fairly centered. Yep. So you can see now that the, the crosshairs now are fairly lining up with where they should be. So I'm just gonna uh, spin the angle of this around just to see where it sits. And it's kind of hard to see with the light as well because the light is causing the reflection. So I'm just gonna. Bring it up. Yeah, so you can see there that the crosshairs are exactly where they should be. And you can see that the center point on the mirror is absolutely in the center of where it should be. And without having this, you wouldn't be able to adjust it that accurately. Um, it's quite difficult to try and visually image this in your head as you're looking down through, especially not through a collimation cap, because I found that to be the, the most difficult. So I'm just going to try to adjust this a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So 
you can see actually it just took us a couple of minutes there and we have a, a really good collimation here it's aligned perfectly and I have the confidence now that if I screw off the um, Ocal collimator and put my camera on it's exactly in the place that it should be so something I'm just going to show you very quickly is if I was to take the Ocal collimator including the image train out and then put it back in again as if I was switching from the Ocal collimator with its image train to my own I'll show you the effect that it has so So this is the Ocal taken out of the image train and I'm going to put it back in now and then lock it down Oops. Oh, that's it locked in place and you can see how much it's off so without having the ocal in the image train to begin with it's very difficult to know if it's locked in place in the correct place or not so what I can actually do here is unlock it move it to roughly where it should be and then using the camera here I can try and get it back to where it was and even still even still I'm struggling so this again this is another position I'm after locking it in place again and you can see that it's off again so the ideal scenario is put your camera and its image train in get your camera's orientation right for where you want to image for the night say if you're trying to get stars in a particular direction or you're trying to get a nebula to fit in a frame or whatever it should be so put your camera in with the image train get it roughly aligned camera wise where it should be and then screw your camera off put the collimator on and then perform your collimation as standard screw that off put your camera back on and you'll know that you're absolutely spot on so hopefully that's of some help uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and uh, please give us a like or subscribe to the channel thanks and clear skies